we uh, began the description of PSP in 1963. It was based on several patients. Dr. Richardson, a neurologist in Toronto and the head of department, that he'd identified during the 1950s. He'd identified an unusual syndrome, a collection of symptoms in them. In them. Uh, there were four patients. One was a very close friend of his, of, of Dr. Richardson's, and uh, they all suffered the same symptoms. They couldn't look up and down. That was a striking feature. And they also had trouble in speaking and swallowing. Their neck was often extended. And they had trouble in walking, so they were off balance and they often fell. And those symptoms were constant in all the four patients and suggested they must be suffering the same disease. So Richardson was able to obtain the brains of these four subjects and Dr. Olszewski, who was a new professor of neuropathology in Toronto, Dr. Olszewski and I worked together for a year uh, describing the changes of the brain and uh, the distribution where the degeneration was occurring. And those changes that we found were quite as unique and quite as distinctive as the clinical syndrome that Dr. Richardson has recognized. So we described that then as a clinical and pathological entity that really wasn't familiar to other neurologists. Um, we called it, at Dr. Richardson's suggestion, progressive, because it was progressive, supranuclear, because that was the mechanism of the problem with gaze and eye movement, swallowing and speech that all the patients had. So it was a supranuclear palsy, which means a weak Progressive Supranuclear Palsy, or PSP. And following our publication, people in other parts of the world, neurologists, were aware of the paper and began to recognize patients with the same symptoms in their practice. And so PSP came to be better and better known. And in recent years, it's been found to be due to a protein accumulation in the nerve cell, type of protein called tau, and a particular form of tau, tau-4. And this protein accumulates in the cells, stuffs the cells, and causes their death. And as they die, so people begin to develop these symptoms. Gaze palsy, pseudobulbar palsy with speech and swallowing troubles, posturing of the neck, falls that are often quite early, difficulty in walking, and their memory is impaired. Um, so that's really the story of of PSP, how it was recognized by Dr. Richardson, and then described by Dr. Wojcicki. I was his assistant and uh, working with him that year in which we did the description. Um, it's now recognized that PSP may show itself in many different ways. It may show itself primarily as a problem with Parkinsonism, or with dementia, or with prominent language difficulty. Uh, and, and so PSP, the pathological entity, PSP, has many manifestations. And uh, the other disease, which is very closely related, is cortical basilar degeneration. Of course, there was great interest in that too. The similarity 
of the two diseases suggests that uh, there is a relationship between them, particularly in respect of their cause. Um, the earliest description of PSP, we think, was in the 1800s, in 1858, by Charles Dickens, who's known for his precise descriptions of people and their symptoms. And he, in 19, or 1858, wrote a very clear description of a person that he met during one of his travels, which must be the description of a patient with PSP. It's a worldwide illness. And uh, we feel that understanding the reason for it, its cause, can lead to understanding of related diseases, diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. We feel understanding of PSP will advance understanding. And if we can find a cure that's helpful for PSP, that too may be very helpful uh, as a cure for those very major diseases which affect millions of the world's aging populations in all countries. So that's becoming the importance of progressive supranuclear palsy to the neurological community. A wonderful experience for me to know that the disease we describe and didn't know how common it would be 55 years ago is indeed turning out to, uh, to be important in pointing towards the possibility of cause and cure of major related neuro neurological and neurodegenerative diseases. The importance of PSP at the present time is understanding its cause and what the mechanism is that causes this abnormal protein to accumulate in the nerve cells and what process it is that begins that, whether it's an external process like an infection that people pick up and then it in turn causes the change that occurs in the nerve cells, or whether the nerve cells are involved primarily and the change occurs within them. And it's, I mean, it's, it's very basic things that we don't fully understand or recognize yet. Things that we're hoping the intense research that's going on now will tell us. And once we have an understanding of why these protein abnormalities are occurring in the nervous system, then we'll be in a much better position to know what can help them and hopefully prevent the accumulation of these proteins, which really are the harmful uh, agent of, the, uh, of PSP and of its degeneration. And are also a feature of other degenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, which are better known diseases in PSP and which occur and affect much larger numbers of people. 